So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do our first pinch pot. Of course, we're going to take this clay and tap it so that we start getting it in a rounded shape. We want to work with that sphere first. You guys should have made pinch pots in the past. If you haven't, you can go ahead and take a practice time to make sure you get this right because if you don't get a pinch pot just right, it's not gonna fit together the right way. So you kind of have a spear. I always pick the one that has like the most wrinkle in it to put my thumb in. And then you're going to pinch between your thumb and your other four fingers until it starts looking like a pot. You can determine how shallow or deep this is by where you push. You want to try and get the same thickness all the way around. So you want this edge to be the same thickness. You don't want it to be super skinny one place and really thick in another space. And then I always go like this a little bit, make it a nice flat edge since we're going to have to combine it with the other side of the rattle. It'll also show me where it's not quite the same thickness and I need to pinch it out a little bit more. And just go like that. I'm gently popping it down so that it has that nice flat surface. I'm going to make another one. Same sort of thing. I'm going to work it into a sphere. Find the messiest point, stick my thumb in, and start working that part of the pinch pot out. Squeezing again between my thumb and my four fingers. I also want to try and keep the outside a little smooth since I'm going to be working that into the shape of my animal. And I'm going to check to make sure both of them are pretty much the same size, which they are, so that looks good. I'm going to take a piece of this off because I need to make a few little beads in here for my rattle. Um, depending on how thick your walls are kind of depends on the sound of your rattle. Thicker walls will give you a higher, or, sorry, a lower pitch rattle. Thinner walls will give you a higher pitched rattle sound. So more of a tinkling versus a tonkling. Um, these, you don't have to cut it. You could also pinch it off with your fingers, but I just go like this. And then I'm just going to make some tiny little vegetable pea shaped balls. Now, I could just throw them in here and let them dry. The problem is if I do that and they start sticking together, then it won't rattle. So we're going to take some paper towel to put in there with these to keep them separated. And you're probably thinking now, wait a minute, if I put paper towel in there, what's gonna happen to it inside the kiln? The answer is it's going to burn up. It will turn into ash. Um, the kiln gets hot enough that even though it's inside, of your pinch pot rattle, it will still set that paper on fire um, and it will burn it off. So no big deal, the ashes will fall out because we're gonna poke a hole in the bottom of this so that when you get it um, in the kiln, it doesn't explode. Remember how in the past we talked about if you don't have an air source that leads to an inside, it can explode because we're putting an air pocket in here when we do this, right? So we're gonna put a hole in it, but not big enough that our little um, rattle beads are going I to I get fall. a little towel. I just tear it up to a couple of separate ones, right? Kind of wrap each bead in a little bitty one. Just so that, like I said, they're not, they don't get a chance to stick to each other this way. And I'm not pushing hard when I push them in here. I don't want to squish them and make anything stick. Then, going to use my score and slip method to put these two pieces together. First I'm going to go around the edge and I'm going to score it. This creates our zipper effect so that the two pieces will zip together and lock in once we do this. You want to make sure you get it nice and marked up. I'm not going too deep. Uh, I don't want to cause lots of problems and scratches and giant holes, but I am loosening it up. And then I'm going to get some of our slip, that's the really slimy part of this. And I'm going to gently put it around the edges. Sometimes I even just put water, I don't even get too much slip, which is fine. That's what we're looking for. We're looking to make it a little wet. This is our, you know, clay glue. It helps hold things together. And then I'm going to take these two, and I push gently and turn just a little bit so it starts getting sticky. And then, whoop, there we go. 
I'm going to start smoothing out that edge. And this is kind of the trickiest part because you'll see it's a little bumpy. So to smooth that edge out, you sort of have to work it back and forth. Get your fingers a little wet and get the clay a little wet. You don't want it sopping and dripping though. That's going to be too much. Uh, that can also cause your clay to crack. You just want to kind of take a little bit of the slip out of here and fill in those cracks. And this might be the point in time where your whole hand starts to kind of really get dirty. Now we're not trying to get dirty on purpose, it's just the way that this part works when you start grabbing a bunch of the slip out. And be careful that your sphere doesn't start to disappear, right? You want to keep it that nice round shape like my plan. I'm doing my bird so that I can add things to it next time. This will be about all the further you get in class today. So this is going to go in a Ziploc bag with your name on it um, and a little spritz of water by your teacher. You're gonna seal it up and put it on your class shelf. So when we come back next week, it's a nice leather hard surface to start adding things to. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the next part, which is starting to add some of our details. I have my nice sphere here for my bird rattle. The next thing I need to do is I need to look at a beak, some eyes, these beautiful patterns I've carved in, some wings, and those tail feathers on mine are actually going to be feathers I'm going to glue on when I'm done with this process. So I'm gonna set this out of the way. And the next thing I need to do is I wanna make those wings, I'm actually gonna make the beak. So I'm gonna tear off some of this, about the size of the beak, right? And my beak is sort of a cone shape, so it's gonna be pointy on one side. And that's going to be way too big, too long. I'm going to roll it out so that it's thick on this side, but then it gets thinner, which means I'm going to roll some off. Okay. If I look at it compared to the size of my rattle, I only want it about there. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to kind of tap it down on the table real gently a little bit so that I can get it flat because we always need to score and slip. So I'm going to score this part little checkerboard pattern and then I'm going to score on here where I want the beak to go right a little bit of that water for the slip and I'm going to gently push that beak on and turn just a little bit so that it really locks in there there we go check it make sure it's where I want it to be it's kind of centered it looks like it's wanting to come off though so I'm going to work at this a little more I want to make sure it's not going to just fall off once it dries. There we go. Okay. So there's that part. Next, I want to look at the wings. The wings are flat, so I'm going to peel some of this off. Get my rolling pin, move my stuff out of the way. And I don't want this to be too thin. It really shouldn't be any thinner than my tools here. Good. And so I want two little wings. So I'm just going to go through and I put this all the way down until it touches the table, or in this case my black paper, and then I just carve out the wings. Like that. I can lift up and set this to the side, I might need it. Now my wings, you'll notice I had a little pattern I'm going to have to put on here. I'm going to do that after I attach it to the bird though, because in, while I'm attaching it to the bird, something might happen to it with the scoring and slipping process that would make the pattern disappear. So I'm going to be careful to add this to the bird first and then carve on the pattern. And I always look to see which side looks a little rougher and then that's the side I make my score and slip side. And again, I have to score it and I'm attaching it to the bird. I'm gonna push firmly but gently on there. And then I like to look down from the top to kind of estimate where that other one goes so that they're centered. There we go. Those aren't gonna fall off. I can shake everything and nothing falls off. Then I can start taking my tools and I can go back in and I can add those little designs. And sometimes your tool gets clay built up on it because you're removing clay. You just have to take it off. And I did two rows of short feathers, or like scales, right? So I'm going to do that. And then I did the longer ones underneath that went at an angle. There we go. And then I can dust off any of those little pieces I don't want. I'm going to do that on the other side.
other thing you want to remember to do that we had talked about last time, if we haven't done it already, is to make sure that that hole gets poked in there all the way through to where the beads are so that we have our air hole when we're firing it in the kiln. The last little bit I need to put on here are the eyes, and then I'm going to carve in some of those other feathers from my plan, like this one. Now the reason that I put these little scratch marks in here is I have a secret something coming later for that part of my bird, but it's after I fire it, so I'm not gonna work on it right now. The next thing I wanna look at doing are carving these little zigzag patterns into my bird. And I'm gonna start on the top where it's really small. I'm just gonna start with this tool. And then I want to take this tool, this will actually remove, it'll carve out, as you can see, some of that clay, and it makes this line a little deeper and a little more permanent. This is removing clay from our sculpture. And at this point it is three-dimensional, so it is a sculpture. And this would be somewhat similar to how they would do reliefs. Um, they could take away subtractive method, right? Like we learn about in math, or they could do additive and they can add and build up. Whichever way you wanna do this part is up to you. I like subtractive just because it tends to be a little easier. We've already done our additive with our wings and our beak and our eyes. And then I'm just gonna keep going around and carving this pattern until I get to the bottom. So now he's all ready to fire. I have all the subtractive areas carved into him. He has his wings with his details, his beak, his eyes. He's ready to go over on the drying rack for the week until he goes in the kiln.